at a painting by Mary Cassatt called The Loge. And actually, this subject of young women at the opera is something that she paints several times. And Degas painting things like that. But Degas painting this subject in a very different way. Right, he's painting backstage at the opera. He's painting the women on stage right. performing. Right. And what Cassatt is doing, this American who's in Paris, is painting the audience, painting often Americans, and sometimes her family mm -hmm. who are observing, often in a much more proper sort of environment. That's true. And yeah. as a woman, she may have been confined more to that more proper environment. So they're probably at the Paris Opera. Yes, at the new Opera House. That's right. Very much a symbol of the new cultured industrial, the, all the money that was created right. in this new industrial culture. And here was its showplace. Here this, was its right, stage. centerpiece of, of right. the new modern Paris. And the stage, of course, was not simply the stage on which the ballerinas performed, no. but the stage was the loge. The stage was the audience. So I mean, you went to see and be seen. They seem appropriately skittish, I think, for their place in society. Mm -hmm. About being observed and a little bit uncomfortable about that bit. in a way that would have, would have been seen as appropriate to them. And well, they're have, very young. They look they very are. young. But it would have also made them more chaste, and I think mm -hmm. they are, in a sense, fulfilling their social obligation to they their are. class. But oh my God, look at the pinks and the <laughs> greens. Look at the figure's dress in the foreground and their gloves. Their gloves are blue and green. In a way, I feel like this foreshadows what Van Gogh and Gauguin are going to do with color, the detachment from reality. Now, this is thinking about shadow in terms of color, yeah. but it's so removed from the traditional way of modeling and really modeling with color and suggesting light with color in a really radical way. And, and disassociating color from the clearly observed. Right. I think that that's right. true. And oh, taking license with so color. So am I looking at these two women who stand in front of a mirror or sit in yeah, front of I a mirror? Yeah, I think there's a mirror behind because them. Because they must be looking towards the stage. And of course, we see the reflection in back of them and of that wonderful chandelier as well, yeah, which yeah. would have been lowered. I feel like this, this should be called symphony in pink and green yes. and purple yes. and are yellow. You, so are you suggesting that in a sense color is taking the place of the music that they might be hearing? I hadn't thought of that. I feel very much like there is a, this is very much about the joy of color. There is a kind of destruction of traditional space here mm -hmm. that would have been influenced by, Japanese, by Japanese. And so you've got that kind of reference. You've also got the beautiful arc of the fan, which echoes the arc of her shoulder and also the arc of the loge yeah. that we see in reflection. Yeah, there are these counterpointing circles. That move throughout. We see it in, in, the in, chandelier. in her choker, we see it in the fan, we see it in her shoulder. Yeah. Absolutely throughout. This is another example of an Impressionist painting where it looks so spontaneous, but when you really stop to analyze, you've got a lot of forms that are very, very carefully constructed. Mm, but I think you're absolutely right. This painting is about color, and it's about a kind of open brushwork, and it's yeah. about the act of observing. And once again, that open brushwork and this kind of liberty with color suggesting what it was like to live in the, in the 1870s and 80s in Paris.